Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call on today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. New plans for improving the judicial system in 2014. Looming layoffs at some private banks have workers concerned about job security. The new president of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union pushing for less contentious relations at BEC. The latest on energy reform at BEC and recognizing a historic site at Lewis Street. We have those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil and your MB12 starts right now. Joining us. Five new courts are on the way, and according to the Attorney General, judges will be ready to take up seats on the new benches as soon as the criminal courts are complete. She gave Nikki DeVoe more details about the plans. Here's her report. Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson said while the judges have not yet been appointed, they will be in time for the completion of the courts here on Bank Lane. But she said as it stands now, there will not be one judge for each court. Not yet been appointed, but the funding is in place and there will be a We believe that there will not be five judges sitting full time, but rather temporary judges are from the bench probably, who will be able to give three months or six months. So the courts will be manned. Uh, it is unlikely that they'll be manned by a judge who sits for two years or a judge who sits for one year. That is unlikely but possible. Ministry of Works officials said the refurbishment of an additional five Supreme Courts will be completed before the end of February. The courts will add to the six criminal courts that are currently in use. Prime Minister Perry Christie said last month the Ministry of Works has been instructed to work around the clock to complete the refurbishment of additional criminal courts so that 10 facilities will be able to operate simultaneously. With additional courts operating, Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson said judges could try as many as 400 criminal matters in a year. We believe that it is important to show that matters can be dispensed with within one year of a person being charged before the courts. This is very critical because persons who want to assert their innocence want to swiftly assert their innocence. They don't want to be on remand for three years or more at Fox Hill. And those who are the victims of crime want to have satisfaction swiftly also. So we believe this would help tremendously. Just last week, Ministry of Works Permanent Secretary Colin Higgs said the work was nearing completion and the contractor, Top Builders International, is now working on the layout of the courtrooms. Three of the courts will be specifically for criminal matters and two will hear both criminal and civil matters. Maynard Gibson said this will hopefully help to make a dent in the crippling civil court backlog that she says many people fail to mention. There is also a serious problem of backlog on the civil side of the court. And this is also something to which the president and others have alluded. And it is our hope that those responsible will take note of the concerns of the public and their judicial brothers and sisters in this regard. Legal observers have said that unless efforts are made to increase the number of trials that are completed, the backlog would continue to increase. The Attorney General said the addition of these courts is a part of those efforts. Reporting from Bank Lane for NB12, I'm Nikia DeVoe. 
Well, executives of the Bahamas Financial Services Union are encouraging bankers throughout the country to join their union. The call comes amidst looming layoffs after two commercial banks announced plans to reduce or reassign staff. BFSU head Teresa Mortimer says she's been receiving several calls from anxious Scotiabank and Royal Bank employees who are afraid of losing their jobs. But Mortimer says the union can't help workers who are not a part of the union. All the other private sectors, all the lawyers, the commercial banks, the offshore banks, the real estate, they all can be members of the Bahamas Financial Services Union. And this call is going out because from Friday, my phone has been ringing nonstop. And it's ringing with the employees from Bank of Nova Scotia and from Royal Bank especially. And their cry is, can you help us? And it's so sad, I cannot help you if you are not a member of the union. My cry to them this morning is, the Bahamas Financial Services Union is willing to sit at the table and bargain on your behalf. Scotiabank recently confirmed plans to move certain functions from the Bahamas to Trinidad and Tobago as it moves to centralize within the Caribbean. The bank says this is in order to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of its operations. The bank is the second in four months to announce plans to reduce or reassign staff. CIBC First Caribbean International Bank is currently in the process of a downsizing exercise in which it has offered local staff the opportunity to take voluntary separation packages. And based on the uptake of these would determine how many redundancies may be necessary. Mortimer says the union is fighting for those workers at CIBC and getting them better deals. Yes, redundancies are going on all around us. That's no secret. Okay, but here in First Caribbean International Bank, CIBC, we sit at the table. And because we sit at the table, we have uh, a part in how it happens. We have a part in the process that it takes. When the bank announced in, in December that they needed to do mass redundancies, we had met already. And even though it's going to be mass redundancies, what you see going on in CIBC First Caribbean right now is persons who have completed 30 years of service, some even who have completed less years of service, but who have said, listen, I can retire now. I'm eligible and I'm ready to go home. Mortimer says she believes bank employees won't come forward and join the union because they're afraid of losing their jobs. But former National Congress of Trade Unions President Jennifer Isaacs Dotson says joining a union is everyone's right. Well, the Bahamas has signed on to a number of conventions through the International Labor Organization, which allows all of us to join a union, which gives us that freedom and that we cannot be penalized because we join a union. And Bahamians need to understand that you have a fundamental right we have signed on to that convention. It is enshrined in our labor laws that we have a right of freedom of association. So Bahamians must understand it and stop being afraid. We as a country must stand up for ourselves. Our sisters and brothers in the Caribbean do not hesitate to join a union. Scotiabank centralization plan mirrors that of its Caribbean operations, according to the bank, which operates shared services hubs in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Dominican Republic, where it already centralizes some of the functions of its operations in 55 countries globally. Well, the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union has a new president in 25-year BC employee Paul Maynard. Maynard said today he is prepared to tackle several issues, including a new industrial agreement and a, quote, God complex at the company. Dana Smith reports. With just months left on the government's timeline until BC is officially split and operated by two companies, the newly elected union president said getting the industrial agreement settled is a key focus. Maynard also said he does not expect to have the same contentious relationship with BC Chairman Leslie Miller as did his predecessor. Mr. Miller um, did what Mr. Miller did, all right? I'm a new president coming in. I expect I won't have those problems with Mr. Miller. I can just put it that way. Maynard has replaced former President Stefano Green, who had a combative relationship with Chairman Leslie Miller. The two faced off over issues such as overtime pay, sick pay, and shifts. The latest issue was what Miller called double dipping, or employees collecting sick pay from both National Insurance and BEC. The government has promised to end the practice, and Maynard said he'll work with the government over the issue, although he doesn't necessarily agree that the practice is wrong. Everybody focuses on this double dipping. It's not double dipping. You're talking about, what is it, 30, 33% from national insurance? You know, you're talking about 100% scam. It can be double dipping. The point is, everybody double dipping. The whole civil service double dipping. All right? Okay, the government made a decision on it. All right? We'll discuss it. I'm sure the, the Minister of Labor will bring it up. 
we discuss it and, and we make a decision on it. Another focus for Maynard is negotiating a new industrial agreement before BEC is broken up into two companies, a step that is planned by the government to happen by May of this year. The government needs to realize that there's a lot of little stuff that can't go with the company. Once it's sold, you can, these things can't go and they have to straighten these things out before, before that happens. The industrial agreement expired last year and includes matters such as pension and medical insurance. Maynard said he is not prepared to negotiate adjustments to the latter. When asked if he believes the agreement can be wrapped up within the next four months, he said all it will take is hard work. Well, our side is prepared to do it. It's their side that's the problem. Another issue Maynard wants to address is eliminating what he called the God complex that he says exists among some managers at BEC. The problem with BEC is we have what you call a God complex going on with management. It has nothing to do with the government, whether it be PLP or FNM, it has nothing to do with them. It's managers, and not all managers because you know they get touchy, but a lot of managers believe that they're God Almighty. The problem, according to Maynard, is some managers believe their decisions should not be questioned by anyone else. And he says they never have to account for any mistakes. It's a problem Maynard says has been going on for the past eight years. And it is because of this, he said, that some BC employees are unhappy and disillusioned. He said it's also contributing to the, quote, predicament at the nation's electric company. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. The deal between government and cable and wireless communications over 2% of the Bahamas Telecommunications Company's shares is expected to be finalized by the end of March. Government's lead negotiator Franklin Wilson tells our news team that the BTC Foundation will be created soon after the deal is finalized. Under the terms of the new deal, CWC will transfer 5,093,200 shares to government to be held in trust for the Bahamian people. That trust will be managed by the BTC Foundation. Prime Minister Perry Christie announced last week Week that government negotiated the deal with CWC to give up nearly 2% of its shares in BTC at no cost to the government or the Bahamian people. The foundation will assist with sports development, civic activities, and fighting crime through the expansion of the closed-circuit television network. 51% of BTC was sold to CWC in 2011 under the Ingram administration. A Supreme Court judge today imposing a 20-year sentence on an HIV-positive man for a rape he committed after escaping from custody. Frederick Green Neely pleaded guilty to the April 10, 2012 sexual assault on a 17-year-old virgin at her home. At the time of the incident, Green Neely was being sought by police for escaping from prison officers while at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Green Neely is married with children. The convict's lawyer, Calvin Seymour, told Senior Justice John Isaacs that he was sorry for what he had done and had changed his life. By contrast, the victim's father said the crime has devastated his family as he asked the judge not to show any mercy. Isaacs told Green Neely that he faced a maximum of life imprisonment. However, he received a deduction for his guilty plea, which spared his victim from reliving the ordeal at trial.